Good morning. When I was a child, I had this toy. Anyone else remember this one? So naturally, I wanted to be a nurse or a doctor, and that stuck for a while. But I started my actual working life as a babysitter, and then I got a taste of medicine by becoming a candy striper. And for the non-Americans out there, I was informed you might not know what this is. It does not mean that I painted stripes on candy, although I think my 14-year-old self would have really liked that job. No, a candy striper was a volunteer at the hospital. And then I graduated up to sandwich making. And then it was time for university, and I kind of forgot about being a doctor because everyone told me I should be an engineer or an actuary because I was good at math. Meanwhile, to work my way through university, I was a secretary and a physicist assistant. Try to say that five times, especially when you're rehearsing after learning to social. <laughs> so I assumed I would end up as an engineer, but not without considering medicine again, or what about actually being a physicist, or maybe a social worker, or a patent lawyer? So many choices. But maybe an actuary, because everyone said I should do that. But no, engineering is the thing that made sense. And then I came to a choice in my life when university ended. What should I do before going to engineering grad school? I had a job offer for, to be a consultant, whatever that means. If anyone knows, let me know. Or I could move to Japan and teach English. You can probably guess which choice I chose. And it's a good thing I did, because it was in Japan where I learned I was meant to be a teacher. And I'm glad I didn't listen to the people who said, you should be an engineer. It's like the Choose Your Own Adventure stories from when we were kids. Remember these? I loved these books. Life is full of choices and opportunities, but unlike the books, we don't get to go back and make a different choice. And so how can we prepare students for the choices in their life. What about you? Did your 12-year-old self correctly predict where you are right now? Or did you perhaps make a choice that led you down this path? My choices didn't end there. I chose to become a high school physics teacher, and while there, I realized the value of using technology for learning, and I found myself moving to this role of ed tech coach, a job I didn't even know existed when I began teaching. And now this math science person sometimes finds herself teaching art-related things like graphic design. And I have to wonder, how did I get here? There isn't reliable data on how many times we change careers in a lifetime, because no one can agree on what constitutes a career change. But in the research that I did, it seems that perhaps we change careers seven times or jobs 12 times in our life. I do know that I've had a lot more change in my life than my parents have, and chances are our students will have just as much change, if not more. So how do we prepare them for choices, whether job-related or not, in their adventure stories? I think we can start with ourselves. What are the things that we've developed in ourselves to help us create such rich adventures? And I think if we put those together, we can create a how-to book for our students. First, we take risks and we're open to adventure. We know that choices don't come our way unless we're open to them. Second, we're curious. We're always learning new things and trying things for the first time. Third, we have a growth mindset. We know that we are not perfect at something the first time and it takes practice to get good and so we don't give up. And lastly, we share our work, because we know that by sharing our work, doors open that we didn't know were there, and now we are writing our own choices into our story. So along with modeling these for students, what can we do for them to help them develop these things? Well, I think one promising idea that I see spreading throughout schools and classrooms is the increase of student-directed learning time. It goes by many different names, Genius Hour, Passion Project, Try Time, Impact Project, whatever you want to call it and however we structure it, it's a chance for students to practice the skills that have helped us in our adventures. It's an opportunity for students to find their curiosities, discover them, find new ones, learn about themselves as learners, and solve their own problems. Because we want students to not only make choices in their life, but want to make choices in their life. 
and not listen to the people who say, you should be an engineer. And so learning too, we've come to a choice. Which do you choose? Oh wait, this is yesterday's choice that hopefully led you here today. Here's today's choice. Which do you choose? Think about it. Tweet your answer to the learning to hashtag. And because I want my students to have a rich and thick adventure story, I want to give them a message. And that message is similar to the warning that was at the beginning of Choose Your Own Adventure Stories. And what I want to say to students is this. Your life doesn't have to be a novel that starts on page one and goes straight, to the, straight through to the end. Your book can be different from other books. Your book is full of dangers and adventures and choices and consequences. You must use all of your numerous talents and much of your enormous intelligence. But don't worry, you will make the right choice at the right time. So get out there, skip some pages, and choose your own adventure. Thank you.